Welcome back, my name is Ned, I am a technical evangelist at Caspio, and in the first video of this ultimate video guide, we're going to learn how to build a survey form using Caspio. Let's take a look. Once you're logged inside your Caspio account, the first thing you're going to want to do is set up a new application, and then you can either import data from Excel or Access Database if you have some data that's offline, or you can build your application from scratch. That's what we're going to do. Next step is to give your application a name. I'm simply going to call this survey form. You can have your own naming convention if you'd like. After you click finish, you will be able to see that application listed on your home page. From there, you want to click on the open link. And then you're going to be able to see these objects on the left hand side to construct your survey form. The most important thing that you want to build first is your table. Database table is going to contain all the fields of all the information you wish to capture on the survey form. So to build your table, click on the new table link and then list all of the fields you would like to have inside that table. The most important field I'm going to list first is the survey ID and we're going to assign that to be a random ID. You can also use auto number or prefix or GUID. A random ID uniquely identifies each row inside your database table, so it's always important to have an ID in every table that you create in a database application. Underneath the survey ID, we're going to have name because I want to collect the name of the people that are submitting my survey. Underneath name, we might wish to use an email field, then department. Then I'm going to track and see work length. Now, the form that I'm building is a job evaluation form because I want to be able to get feedback from the employees on how they feel about their job. So these are the type of fields I'm going to be adding to my table. Underneath work length, now let's have some radio button type fields where users get input how they feel about certain categories, if it's excellent, below average, average, etc. So as a reference for this field, let's call it confident. I have skills. But the actual label that I want to have for this field is going to be, I am confident I have the skills to do my current tasks. When you're creating your field names, it's going to have to be abbreviated in some way because you only have so many characters you can list in the table. So as long as the naming convention makes sense to you, go ahead and use that naming convention. After you have that, then you list your label here to the right. You can also modify your label when you build a form at a later time. I'm going to just add one more and then we're going to speed things up a little bit. For the field underneath this one, we're going to have time current tasks, but the actual label is going to read, I have plenty of time to do my current tasks. Let's go ahead and fix the spelling. And also for work length, actually the, the label itself is going to read, how long have you worked here with the question mark. These two fields, we want to actually store a number instead of text 255 because when the user submits excellent, we want to record that in the table as a number 5. If they submit above average, we want to record that as 4, not as actual text. And the reason why I want to store a number inside a table is because later on I want to do some metrics and calculations to get averages and sums to find out how people feel about certain categories. Now let me go ahead and quickly add the rest of the fields. Once you've added all of your fields for your radio button options, we're going to add two more fields here to finish things off. One for comments because at the end I want to be able to get the input of my employees on how they feel about the overall review. And also dates submitted so that we can track and see when this evaluation form was submitted. And for that we're going to choose timestamp. For my comments we're going to choose text 64000 so the end users can type in more information. Once you're done inputting all of your fields inside a table, you can go ahead and save that table now and simply just give it a name. I will call it UVG Survey Form. Click Finish. And there's my table that's going to later on store the information that my end users are submitting. Now I'm going to quickly build one more table that's going to serve as a lookup table. So set up a brand new table. First field is going to be called Answer. And the second field is going to be called score. Now the second field, I do want to actually turn this into a number because I want to apply a number to a certain answer. So save the table and let's call it UVG Survey Answers Lookup. 
click finish. And now inside this table, we're going to add some values. One can be excellent, and we want to assign that a score of five. Let's have above average, that's going to be a four. Average will be scored at three. Below average will be a two. And poor will be one. So those are going to be my options inside my table. So just imagine on the submission form when they see excellent all the way down to poor, they're going to select excellent, but in the table, it's going to store the value that we have assigned as a number. Now that we have our tables created, it's time to build a form. And to do that, we're going to go to the data pages object, click on this link for new data page, and this is going to launch Caspio's point and click data page wizard. By default, the submission form is already selected for me. I do want to point out here that Caspio is a lot more than just a form builder. You can build workflow type applications where you build reports, calendars, charts for dashboards, and even some HTML data pages. If you're a little bit more technically adept, you can customize your data pages with HTML and CSS. But it is a full-on robust solution that allows you to build enterprise type applications with workflows. So if down the line you want to build a CRM or task management, Caspio has the tools to create applications of that magnitude. So let's build our form and select submission form and hit next. My data source table needs to be the table that's going to contain all the answers. So this is the very first table that we created with all the fields. The data page name, this is completely up to you. I'm going to call this survey form. For my style, now inside your account, you're going to see a list of different style. Styles are all about aesthetics, the look and feel of your form. I already have a style predefined for my survey form, so I'm just going to find it and select it. Of course, you can fully customize your own style by going to this object. So if you want a specific set of colors to match the palette of your website, you can customize your style and apply it to your form. At this point, we can hit next. And now in the wizard, it's asking me, what fields would you like to have on your survey form? You can select one field at a time, or you can click on the double arrow to move all the fields to the right. In this case, we want all the fields. Let's continue. Once you reach this screen, configure properties. Here you can select each field on the left-hand side, and you can make modifications on the right side. If you would like to see what this form looks like at this point before you make any modifications, you can click on the preview button, and here's what the form looks like. At the moment, every single field is set up as a text field. Okay, but however, we are going to have some radio buttons, some drop downs, and we're going to style the form so we have multiple columns. So let's begin by quickly showing you how to change those number data types from the table into radio buttons. So back inside the data page wizard, all you have to do is select that field. This is the very first one, which is, I am confident I have the skills to perform my job. Instead of that being a text field, we can turn that into a radio button from this dropdown. And we can select instead of custom values where we input our own radio buttons. We already have a table that contains all of those answers. So we can do a lookup table. And then we select that lookup table that contains all the scores and answers. And what do I want to display? Well, I want to display the answer, but the value that I want to store inside a table is going to be the actual number from that table. This is the reason why we had those two columns inside that table. One to display the answer, and the other one is to store the actual value inside the table. Now when you hit preview, you will see how we transform that text field into a radio button options. What you're going to do is basically propagate that same setup throughout your form. So for each one of these fields, you're going to turn that text field into a radio button same way as we just did. So we're going to save on time. I'm going to do that very quickly. I'll do it for one more and then we're going to speed things up a little bit. So for this field, I'm going to also select radio button, select lookup table, select my lookup table, and then have this setup answer and score. You can always hit preview just to verify to make sure that you had the same setup. So let's speed things up a little bit. For this last field, since I don't have a lookup table for the very last field, it's going to have a slightly different set of options. Let's do radio buttons and let's do custom values. My first option can say very satisfied. We're going to assign a value of five. 
let's have satisfied. And we're going to give that a value of 4. Neutral, that's going to be a 3. Dissatisfied, that'll be a 2. And very dissatisfied. And we'll assign a value of 1. So what does that mean? This is what the user is going to see on the form, which is display. But when they make that selection and submit the form, we're actually storing the value inside the table as a number, not as the actual text. So at this point, I can also preview the form to see what it looks like. And you can see how very quickly we were able to change all of those options from a text field into a radio button. What this means, once the user starts selecting these options, and at the end they click Submit, they're going to be storing the number inside a table, once again, not the actual text. Because we want to store the value so that we can later on perform some calculations, maybe even build some charts so that we can see averages and also some summations to understand patterns and metrics. Now let's modify the comments field. The comments field, I would like to turn that into a text area so that the end user can see what they're actually typing. Let me show you the difference. Let's hit preview again. You will see that we now have a text area. But I only want to display this text area once this selection is selected. Otherwise, I would like to hide this text area if they don't provide an answer for this question. So now let's tap into some conditional logic so you can see how that's done in Caspio. It's actually very easy. You're going to access the Rules tab here at the top. You're going to set up your very first rule by clicking on the plus. And rule number one, you set the criteria first. Click New, and then based on the field name, which is overall how satisfied are you with your job, if that field is blank, in other words, if nothing is selected, what action do you want to perform? Click on the New button and simply just hide the Comments field. Click OK. So what does this rule say? If this question is blank, hide the Comments field. Let's click on the Preview button again, and you can see how we're hiding that entire section until this is selected. So if I do select Neutral, now that field pops up. The next thing that I may want to do is put these four fields in the same row. There are a couple of different ways to create multiple sections in CASP. I'm going to show you my method, which I find very easy. All you need to do is select the field, click on the Advanced tab, and just say Continue Next Element on the same line. Next element is the field after your selected field. That's going to put the email field on the same row as the name. But I want all four of these to be on the same row, so I will select the email field and say continue next element on the same line. I'm going to select my department field and say continue next element on the same line. One last change that I want to make is just to put the label on top for each of the fields. So for work length, I would like to put the label on top department label on top, and do the same thing for email and also name. Once you make this modification, go ahead and click on preview again, and now you get to see what your form looks like. We have four different columns with the label on top, and we also have all of our radio button fields working. What's left to do is to simply add some headings to our form to make the form look a little bit nicer, and we can create some sections to separate different parts of the form. Let's take a look at the live example. So here's what the final version of the form should look like. We have a main heading, we have a subheading, and we have a couple of additional subheadings throughout our form. And that's going to be the very last thing that we need to do. So let's go back to Caspio. To add your main heading and also subheadings throughout your form, it's actually a very easy thing to do in Caspio. All you need to do is use the Insert button and insert an HTML block. I'm going to place this one at the very top. And inside this window, you can now type in any heading that you'd like to have for your form. We know that this form is all about job evaluations, so maybe we can call this job evaluation form. Now, to apply some styling to that text, you have two different methods of how you can accomplish that. You can highlight the text and use the rich text editor to make any modification that you want. So, for example, I could change the format to maybe a heading 1, and you can see how it transforms the text into bigger text. Now, if you know how to code in HTML and you understand CSS, you can click on the Source button 
And here you can add your own HTML and CSS to apply any kind of style that you want to your heading. So you could have a background color, you can make it italic, bold, and you can also apply any other change that you'd like. To add a subheading, all you need to do is just hit enter on the keyboard, and underneath that you can type any text that you want. I'm going to go to my live example and very simply just grab the text that I used in this form. Go back to Caspio and paste that text. The only change that I'm going to make here, you can see how it converted that text into bold. I'm just going to highlight that text and unclick that button. It maintains heading 5, which I'm okay with. Now if you want to add additional subheadings on the rest of your form, you can insert additional HTML blocks by clicking on this button once again and adding an HTML block. Let's grab some more text. Copy it, go back to Caspio, and I'm just going to very simply paste that, highlight it, and unclick this button. And let's just add one more. So we'll highlight that text, back to Caspio, and after my third question, we're going to insert one more HTML block, paste the text, highlight it, click on this button, to remove the bold. So you could preview the form at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish to save my changes. And from here I can also preview to see what it looks like. And there you can see how we're slowly but surely making some nice styling changes to our form. That way our end users know exactly what part of the form they're on. Let's close the preview. Now if you're ready to publish this form to the web, if you want your employees to start filling out the form, Caspio gives you a variety of different deployment methods. The first thing you'll want to do is enable status, and then you can see from six different options that Caspio provides. If you wish to embed this form into your own website, all you need to do is copy this text, paste that text into your website, and publish your web page. As long as people have access to that URL, they'll be able to fill out the form. Let me give you an example. Here's my web page where I'm going to be embedding my submission form. In order to view the form, I have to deploy that code. So I'm going to use this HTML page that I have created for this video. I'm going to find my placeholder, and all I need to do is paste the Caspio code in whatever section I want that form to appear in. We're going to save and publish this page, and now when I refresh my website, I should be able to see all of those changes applied on the web. If you don't have a website and you still wish to publish that form, you can use a URL. All you need to do is copy this link, email this link to whoever you want to fill out that form, and as soon as they click on that link, they're going to be able to see the form. So as you can see, Caspi does give you a couple of different options of how you can deploy the form. The most popular ones are embed and direct link if you don't have a website. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you'll be able to build your own survey forms for your own needs. Join me in the next video where I show you how to build a multi page form. Thanks for watching.